Both Ripple and XRP are the subject of a lot of current FUD. Many individuals claim that Ripple is merely utilizing XRP to dump on retail and boost their own profits as a result of certain fresh emails in the Ripple SEC case. In this video, I'll let you know what I think of those stories and primarily outline my bullish thesis for Ripple and XRP, including how I think both currencies will increase in value and how big I believe they will become. In this video, I want to lay everything out for you and explain how I view these stories in light of my optimistic thesis. I believe you will have a clear idea of our investment after seeing this video. Be sure to stay for the duration of this event. You won't want to miss it, I promise. I want to start this video by discussing some of the Ripple SEC case, evidence that some individuals have been pointing to and claiming to be proof. Future use of XRP by Ripple is not planned. They are merely abusing regular investors by utilizing it. Let me just say right off the bat that if you just apply logic to the situation, I'm not sure where these stories are coming from since Ripple is ultimately using XRP. They are currently using XRP to make billions of dollars worth of cross-border payments. Furthermore, Ripple doesn't compel businesses to use XRP. Because XRP is quicker and more effective, businesses are joining the Ripple network, employing Ripple products, and requesting to utilize XRP. I believe it does away with a lot of the myths, yet some individuals still bring up other points. One charge made in the Ripple SEC case was that the company paid influencers to promote XRP. Those who oppose Ripple and XRP claim that this is concrete evidence that no one really wants XRP to simply drive up the price so that Ripple can sell the XRP for their profits. They want these influencers to talk about it. I'll just say this right now though. I hope Ripple will pay me to promote XRP. If they were actually compensated, I'd be producing all of these films virtually for nothing. However, the truth is that Ripple did pay individuals to discuss XRP, but only to alleviate FUD. Consider the amount of FUD surrounding XRP and Ripple. As you can see, errors are frequently made by people while they are simply using Twitter. Therefore, in the very beginning, Ripple paid certain people to go out and refute these claims. Some people were compensated to claim that XRP is decentralized. In actuality, this is what makes it decentralized. And the whole purpose was to dissipate FUD. This, in my opinion, was a very shrewd move and made a lot of sense. However, some people are removing these statements from their original context and asserting, oh look, this is proof right here. Actually, Ripple doesn't wish to include XRP into any of its offerings. They would rather dump it on the market and use it for speculation. This quote right here, in my opinion, is quite telling. And this was taken directly from Brad Garlinghouse's deposition. The overarching objective of Ripple, according to him, has been to increase the value, trust, and liquidity of XRP. I really believe that the longer we are successful at generating XRP liquidity, the better it will be for generating value across the XRP ecosystem. The next question was, when you talk about value, are you referring to the market price of XRP? That was one factor, according to Brad. Price is undoubtedly a crucial metric. So this alone should put an end to any rumors that Ripple was just utilizing XRP to dump on individual investors. In this instance, Brad testified under oath that their goal is to increase the utility and liquidity of XRP. If Ripple merely wanted to dump it on the market, they wouldn't have to do that. It is not logical. Cryptocurrencies are a game-changing innovation that will radically alter the financial system. And this is what people need to understand. Without XRP, Ripple would just be another business. They don't really stand out. Anyone could replicate Ripple's methods. What distinguishes Ripple is XRP. What distinguishes Ripple as a transformational business is XRP. Thus, they have an incentive to act in XRP's best interests. They want to ensure XRP's future success because Ripple's future depends on it. And that is among the most crucial things that these folks miss. 
The most crucial component of Ripple is XRP. Ripple will stand apart from all other businesses thanks to XRP. Because of this, it makes perfect sense for Ripple to create new products that revolve around XRP and add value to the cryptocurrency. And ultimately, this new usefulness, this new liquidity streaming into XRP, will drive up the price, just like Brad Garlinghouse explains here. One other item you should take note of from this deposition is necessary because, in my sincere hope, it will end forever the speculation about whether or not XRP is actually being used. This comes straight out of the case. If the entire cross-border payments industry truly does use XRP as a medium of exchange, that will put a lot of demand-side pressure on the currency. When you consider the size of this market, it is almost unimaginable. People are expressing their astonishment at the potential effects of XRP on the asset's price and demand as they discuss its uses, and the XRP community has been claiming this right from the start. Innovative items are being produced by Ripple. These revolutionary goods will profoundly alter future cross-border payment systems, as well as, to be honest, a lot of other systems. A crucial component of this equation is XRP. Without XRP, Ripple could not succeed. There will be a huge demand for XRP as businesses continue to adopt this new standard and this new technology that is far superior to any other system currently in use. The price of XRP will increase as a result of this increasing demand for XRP and liquidity within the Ripple solution. And in this deposition, it is exactly what we are hearing. Fundamentally, XRP is essential to Ripple. Ripple does not wish to merely sell off XRP and destroy the asset. They would be ruining the business. And I can assure you without a doubt that I have no doubts. All of the Ripple executives, including Brad Garlinghouse, Rosie Rios, and others, have no desire to serve time in prison. I believe that they would much rather build a company that changes the game, earn crazy sums of money, and become legendary for revolutionizing the financial system. Nobody wants to help a corporate rug pull happen. It is not logical. Additionally, Ripple only has the partners that they do because they are a trustworthy group. And now, I see Ripple execs coming out and talking about all the new central banks they are speaking to consistently, every single day. I was going to play this video, but to be completely honest, I could just paraphrase it. One of Ripple's vice presidents, James Wallace, enters the stage during a Coindesk interview and claims that the company is in contact with central banks all over the world. Guys, we cannot even begin to imagine the value that central banks will provide to this market. Every single day, trillions of dollars will be moving back and forth on the XRP ledger. I don't know what to say to you if you don't believe that this is a bullish catalyst for the price of XRP. All that matters is supply and demand. Once there are two central banks using the network and exchanging trillions of dollars every day, any additional central banks that wish to use it will have to compete for the system's liquidity, or XRP, and my hypothesis is that they will do so because it is exponentially better than anything else available. They will have to pay more when they enter the market and attempt to take some of that liquidity from the other central banks already there, raising the price. And this is only a tiny, straightforward portion of what Ripple is accomplishing. It dwarfs everything I just listed in size. Simply put, this is the easiest concept to comprehend. And I can tell you that just this one solution has already turned me into a huge proponent of Ripple and XRP. Additionally, I believe that everyone needs to be aware of how huge these cryptocurrency companies will eventually become. This statistic that I recently observed absolutely stunned me. At this time, Tether. Tether, indeed. The dubious corporation generates a yearly net income of $5.5 billion while just having a stable coin. More than BlackRock is involved in this. I'm telling you that Tether, an unregulated cryptocurrency business operating in a market that many would consider minor and inconsequential, generates more revenue annually than the biggest asset manager on the planet. 
This should demonstrate to you that these new Bitcoin businesses will demand valuations and let unprecedented amounts of funding to flow into them. Additionally, we discovered the exact same thing online. All the doubters were saying, oh, they could never be greater than this oil corporation as we watch the Amazons, the apples of the world, arrive. Oh, they could never surpass Walmart in size. They could never outgrow this established business. But what we observed was the paradigm-shifting innovation that these new technology businesses were bringing, which required higher valuations and enabled them to make orders of magnitude more money than any other traditional company out there. The same thing will happen to Bitcoin companies, and it will do so at a startlingly rapid rate. The fact that Tether is currently making more money than BlackRock should be a huge warning sign for the direction in which this market is moving. And consider how much bigger Ripple and XRP can be than this dubious stablecoin business. XRP and Ripple are legitimate. They employ individuals from the Treasury, BlackRock, City, and Bank of America, among other organizations. And it will need to be valued much higher than anything Heather is doing. And to wrap up this video, I'll just include a brief chart because, if you haven't already, you must. This is the rate of development of technology over time. You'll also see that we are moving exponentially. Our world is expanding technologically at an unbelievable rate, and it is getting faster by the day. What we need to realize is that the globe will undergo changes in the next 10 years that are unimaginable to us right now. One of the final remaining legacy systems that has to be disrupted is our whole banking system, and it will do so much more quickly than anyone could have predicted. Hold on, folks. This graph will never be balanced. We're just going to keep ripping upward because the more we can build on the innovation that has characterized our civilization over the previous 50 years, the faster it will advance. The Internet of Value and Cryptocurrencies are key components of this, and I believe we are in a great position to take advantage of a lot of this innovation. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It truly means so much.